What's up guys and welcome to my first video on this channel and my first episode of my new career mode of Watford FC. Um, they've been down in the championship for two or three years now and they're quite they're struggling at the moment. Eight games in the season, they're down in 20th place. They are not the biggest club, but I reckon they should be able to get out of the championship or at least make the playoffs this season. I mean, 20th is not where they belong. And I reckon we should be trying to get them at least into the playoffs top half of the table in this first season. And maybe even uh, a direct promotion spot into the into the Prem. Oh, to select our tactical vision, I think we'll pick either counter attack or kick and rush. They're both like low blocks, low risk, just like boot it long and get get forward quick. But I'm I'm kind of liking kick and rush a teeny bit more. It's less low block. Um, allows me to use quicker players. I mean, counter attack you need a few good midfielders, and I mean I don't really think we have the money for that. Um, to pick our coaches, uh, I've, I'm just going through and picking three stars or four stars, but making sure that their salaries are like quite low because we don't have, we only have twenty-ish million, and that's that's not too much compared to the teams like Leicester and Southampton and other teams that have just dropped down and still receiving parachute money. And they've got forty to fifty million. We're just gonna be smart. This guy is at one point eight k a week for. A three star, and I mean that's better than that's a really good deal. Given you only need the defensive skills or the goalkeeper skills now, because those are the only things it's going to work on if you put it in the goalkeeping position. But now that we're done with all our staff, we can head over to the squad and we'll go have a look at what it looks like. I mean, there's some pretty good players here, very young. I've just fixed up the squad now, and I'm looking at our team. Lauza is probably our best player, and we might need to shore up our defence just to make sure we're good enough to even get anywhere near the playoffs. But I think we'll set up our youth academy. I'm going to try and keep this as realistic as possible. Removing all these people from our academy that are already given to us makes a lot of sense. Um, I think we'll spend a bit of our money on our youth academy because that's probably what's going to carry us through. Because I kind of want a 5-star, five 5-star, five star and another good scout, maybe 3-star, three 3-star. Three star. And because I want to keep it as realistic as I'll possible, be... that's why I'll be setting up a scouting network for the first, like, 3 months bef um, in, in England and the surrounding area. I mean, that's where most teams in at this level are scouting, so... And if you guys have any um, suggestions, that would be greatly appreciated. Our scouts, transfers, anything, just put it down below. Because uh, I could use the help. I mean, uh, but now we're going to hire some more scouts. I mean, four star, three star. The first guy just costs way too much. We only have 20 mil to spend. And I know five star, four stars are very, very good. But, I mean, if we just get four star, three star, three star kind of guys, they're good enough to get us the players we need and it won't cost three million but the rest of these guys don't look very good so I'll just go against what I just said and get the guy for three million and we'll set up in Wales, I'll send this guy to Wales because I reckon Gath Bale, he came to Spurs, I mean Came from Wales. Lots of Welsh guys get picked up here. And Scotland, because they've got a good league over there. And I reckon lots of Scottish players dream of coming coming to the Premier League. If you guys have any suggestions, please, please put them down below. Because that it would be greatly appreciated. Moving on to our scouting instructions. I think we'll... My scouting instructions, we need first team quality players. Like... We can't. We really need some new players to revitalize our squad. Uh, but quite young, maximum thirty. 
and probably like a defender and a mid uh, and a winger maybe because those are those are probably the types of guys we need. Our defense doesn't look great, and our wings. One of their guys is expiring in eleven months, so we probably probably need a new right winger. And he's most of them aren't very good. Sixty seven, seventy overall. That's that's not really good enough to keep us up, let alone get us into the Premier League. I just want to limit myself and only go for maybe two signings and two goings this window maybe even for the whole season. But as we advance through the days, we're getting a Kiembe transfer offer. And I mean, to Leicester, they might be going up this season, but I feel like he's one of our core players. We can't let him go. I mean, only 2.4 million. I mean, he he's not gone. We really, really need a defensive mid, and he's our guy, I believe. Um, And to do with... Uh, loser is actually our highest overall player. He's probably the best player we have in the squad right now. He seems to have a very good potential, and going to Strasbourg in the Ligue 1 is just something I wouldn't expect for someone who's in the championship on a pretty good team. For the Invitational Cups, I, I don't like to do them. I mean, it's just not really that realistic. Uh, a small championship side's not going to earn a million from doing this random invitational cup. And it's just to keep it a tad more like real life. But we've got our scouting reports for some guys I uh, that were linked with Watford past years. I mean, so Carbo looks quite, quite good. Um, Yu Chan is the only one who hasn't actually switched sides since they've been like reported to come to Watford. So he's probably the only realistic option for this year. Um and now we're getting a transfer offer for Morris, a young a young English left back who I I actually quite like. I mean and he's going to the Russian league, which I don't think he would probably want to go to. And I mean it's probably not too realistic to do. But Nottingham Forest have signed Patrick Churia for $24 million. And, oh, we also get Petunia, uh, scouting report, who's another guy I looked into. But sadly, he's also moved this year. Another KMB transfer offer. And like I said before, I mean, he he's one of our core players. We can't let him go. He, even in a swap deal for a left mid, we need our good defensive mid, and he he's our guy. I mean, he's just going to be rock solid this year. And there's not many other people we can even get in in that defensive mid role as good as him who would want to come to a championship side. But our first game is against Leicester, and another scouting report for Jer- Jeremy Raksaki. Uh, he's... He looks pretty good, but I mean, he's at Crystal Palace, so maybe a, maybe a year or two. If we can get into the Premier League this year, he might be willing to to come to us um, instead of going and playing for Crystal's youth team or just staying in their squad. And looking at the wages of our team, Healy, um, we might have to offload him. I mean, he, he, he doesn't seen that good doesn't kind of fit what we're building here and I mean there's good options elsewhere um looking through I'm kind of debating whether Mbuyama if it's realistic for him to come to a championship side from the Netherlands I mean maybe maybe not right now I'm deciding against it because I just don't think it's too realistic for him to come to a championship side and not even a prem side maybe if we get to the prem he'll come but i don't think it's worth it another transfer offer for morris and this time it's even worse i mean another russian or ukrainian team i mean it's not really worth it but getting getting into our first match day here we're we're playing leicester uh it's gonna be a tough game leicester are 
title rivals. I mean, they've probably got the highest odds of winning the whole thing, but a point from this game would be very good. But of course, we're going for all three. I mean, Leicester look very, very good on paper, and given we were in the championship last year, and I don't think we did too well against them. I don't know how this is going to go. And that's a good save by Batchman. I mean, sometimes our defence just like opens up like that. And he has to come from the corner and he's skied it. So I kind of feel like that's where the AI has been OP this year. They've just been able to cut in and get past your defender. It's really, really hard to tackle this year. So we've just got to stay in position and make sure they can't get that simple pass through the middle or because they're pretty good at running through our players, so just going to stay back and man up. But here goes loser. He's through. Bios played him through. This is nice football. And he's banged it in. And that's our first goal of the season against Leicester. We lead at the King Power Stadium. And, I mean, it's a very, very good goal. But we've got to stay ahead. I mean, Leicester have had probably had the better chances. That's a very good, very good coming forward from us. And, I mean, if we can just keep keep our heads and stay back, and that's a very bad pass from Jamie Vardy. So it seems like we're on top at the moment. We keep playing it around, and, oh, that's a bad pass from Porteous. That's something I have to note. It's, like, it's very, very, very hard to pass to the right player. I mean, oh, no, free and Didi in the middle, and that's a great save by Batman. It's very hard to pass this year. But Bay Braybrook through the middle. It's got space. Out to Mavivi. Back inside to Ndidi. Like, why is he open? Vardy through the middle. I don't know why we're we're a bit lower than usual. Makatia. Makatia through the middle. That's good block. Good block. Ricardo Pereira. Cuts in. Come on. Kayembe, get out there. Vardy off to Braybrook. Braybrook. Cross it back. Porteous, that's a good block. McAteer, shot wide. Like, I mean, there's too many free men in the middle. Kayembe is not really tracking back. I might have to fix his uh, roles in his squad position. And it's Lousa through again. This seems like a very good avenue for us. Out to Int. Int. Cross back. And that's a good block by Fave. Like, I mean, we're pretty good. Like, Lauza gets a lot of space through the middle on the right behind Bio. And that's a crossing, and that's a good save from Iverson. Porteous out to Lauza. Lauza, middle, and that's spot by Faze, and he clears it. Kayembe on the edge, down to Kone. Kone dribbles through one. Fake shot, turn. Faze, good tackle. Dewsbury hole. Vardy, Porteous is coming out. Kayembe, and they've sent. Mavidi through. Mavidi. Good tackle, Ngakia. Ngakia seems pretty good. He's he's able to track back and he's doing well. We're keeping the ball pretty well, apart from a few stuff-ups. And I say that and then we lose the ball. And now it's Makatia bursting through. Vardy. Into Braybrook. Braybrook's got a lot of time. Add to Mavidi. And that's off the post. Vardy. Vardy. Vardy's out there. Good stop, Porteous. What what are you doing? And Dewsbury Hole scored. I mean, as shocking, as shocking. He's pretty much passed it straight back into Dewsbury Hole. What are we trying to do here? Come on. That's not the way to concede. I mean, we've probably been the better team the whole whole half, and that's given away again by Lewis. I can't believe we've we've just pretty much given them a free goal. Porteous is driven pass again. And Batman, that's save. I'm not going to lie, our defence looks pretty rocky. We might need maybe a better centre-back very very soon because, I mean, just playing out from the back is hard. I mean, Porteous doesn't have very good passing and he's not strong enough or quick enough to keep up with the strikers like Jamie Vardy, the elite strikers. And that's a crossing and Porteous, he's passed it back to him again. And that's a great block by Hope. And Gakia out. Loser. Good turn. Oh, there's space. There's space on the left. And he's found it. Kone with space ahead of him. And that's a bad pass again. I mean, 
we're we're controlling it pretty well, but we just have these little brain fades for no reason, and we just pass it to pass it to Leicester for no reason, and that's a good shot from Jamie Vardy and a great save. Coming into the second half now, I mean, Hode, we're playing pretty good football out from the back sometimes. I mean, that's a great pass to Kone. There's a lot of space opening. Our midfielders seem to have a lot of space, but I feel like they're being overrun a bit by the other team. It Bio, Bio wins it back, and to pass Salazar. Is that a second? It's a second goal. That's a great goal from them, from us, and... That's I told you, Laos is, Laos is something special. Two goals in his opening game. And I'm also really liking Bio. He's, he's been a really, really strong forward. You can play it to him and he plays good hold-up play. And that's why Laos gets a lot of space through. But I feel like sometimes we just let them come from the kickoff and like give them a few chances. Good Rungakia. I mean, he's been standout in this game. Apart from Laos, he's... And Bio, he's probably been our best second best player. And that's another loss from Porteous. Uh, this guy is not not the good, that's a good tackle. He's made up for it. But I mean, he's not very good playing out from the back. He's I know we're playing kick and run, but that doesn't always mean booting the ball all the way long. It, we play it out from the back and we can counter attack. I mean, now we're forward, coming inside, coming inside, ins ins. What's he gonna do? Chips in. Bowl and that's cleared by Vestergaard. That's pretty bad. Now McAteer's got a bit of space. Plays it back to FaZe. Out to Ricardo. It's good press from us. FaZe. Inside to Dewsbury Hole. And Bio. That's a great tackle. This, this guy's going to be something special. But Lousa, that's that's lousy. That's lousy. Braybrook through the middle. Like Kayembe's needs to mark up there. He's, he's leave, how can he let Vardy get all that? Braybrook through. Braybrook turns. Shot. Save Backman. I mean, we've played reasonably well. I mean, they've had a few good chances, and that's good by KMB. This is... Oh, and that's a bad pass. That's a bad pass. And now he's out of position, and Vardy's free. What's he going to do with it? He drives past one. Turns back into the middle. Vardy, he's keeping on running here. I don't know what we're doing. We've left Mavidi 3, and that's a great tackle from Porteous. I mean, apart from his playing out from the back, he seems like a pretty good option. I mean, we just need someone who's okay at playing out from the back, maybe a teeny bit stronger, because right now he's... Oh, again, again, no, no, no. And that's a good save, Backman. I don't think we really deserve to be winning this game with how many, how many passes we've just pretty much given straight to them, and that's a... Good save again. I mean, what what are we doing? Kone turns into Ndidi. Back to McAteer. And that's another good save, Batman. Batman is having the game of his life here. I mean, I don't even know what we're doing. We're trying to lose this game or something. Because this has been horrible after we've scored the second goal. We're giving the ball away again. And Ndidi plays into Winks. McAteer. And Kayem, everyone's just running away from the ball. It's like Kayembe doesn't even want to get back and help the defence. We've got four players marking six of theirs. Vardy, good Porteous. And Gaki, what are you doing? Good save, Backman. I don't... Backman, he, he's elite. I don't think we'll be... I think he'll be our main choice goalkeeper this year. He seems very, very good. And that's another great save. But what are we doing? You can't get beaten like that. You have to head of that clear. I mean... They're all over us right now. Five corners to one is ridiculous. I mean, they've had way more shots than us and way more clear chances. We're lucky. And McAteer, and he's missed it again. We're just, that's just bad from us. I think we're just going to hold on to the ball for the end of this game here. I mean, if we can get forward, we'll get forward. But, I mean, we'll hold on for the win if we can. We, we just can't give up the ball like we always do, to be honest. But through to Lauza, Lauza to Bio, Bio turns inside, plays it through to Espria, Espria, bang! Oh, he's missed it. He's our he's our young, very young nineteen year old. He's he seems he's an exciting prospect. I mean, maybe two three years down the line he might he'll be very good for us. And that's a good another good save, Batman. But now we've got another offer for Seema. 
our left winger, and it's a swap deal. But can you really see a Swedish player going to the second tier in Italy? I mean, they're giving us a pretty good player back, but that's just ridiculous, to be honest. And I know the market isn't the greatest in this game. I mean, you'll get get it from get a random chance for offer from everywhere. But looking at this, I really wanted Ronnie and Edwards, but we just didn't scout him quick enough. So I'm looking at Ricardo Santos or Scott Malone. They they seem like pretty good players. I mean, 94 strength, 84 stamina. He looks very very good on the physical side. I mean. 65 sprint speed isn't the best, but he's strong, and that that's what you need in English football. But we've got our first monthly scouting report, and we're just going to keep scouting. I mean, these guys don't look all too great. I mean, 70, no, he's not making the cut. He might do. I mean, he won't. Yeah, Ethan Mason looks like a very good, and Dylan Griffin, but we'll keep scouting these guys. Uh, they, and finally, our English guy. So, no, he's definitely not. Neither is he. Maybe, I mean, maybe. Jonathan Garner looks very, very good. Burns looks okay. Lucas Davis is not making it in this team. I mean, we'll keep scouting these guys. And next game's against Cardiff, but I reckon we might need to make a signing here and... Given how he played last game, I reckon we're going to need a centre-back. It's Scott Malone as a left-back, but Santos is our guy. Oh, he We can get him on the cheap. I think his contract's expiring pretty soon. So I think we can try and get him for under his market valuation. And yes, we do. That's a £1.4 million bid, and that that's pretty good eh, from my perspective for what looks like a very strong backup or maybe even starter player. And, I mean, he he's very strong. Maybe not the pace I would have wanted, but maybe maybe he can challenge challenge Porteous to the bat. He wants a big wage increase, and, I mean, I'm trying to get it down, but it doesn't really seem like that's going to work all too much. 19000 a week, that's still not 10000 above what he normally has. We'll just up the signing bonus. And hopefully, hopefully he signs. And that, yes, he does sign. And that's a, I think that's a pretty good deal on a cut price deal. Um, and I think we might put him in the starting eleven. To be honest, Portis just didn't excite me that game. I mean, he wasn't very great. Hope, eh, nothing really to write home about about him. We'll put Portis on the bench and. I guess Santos in the starting eleven for the next game. I mean, I'll put Marriott on the bench as well. He's a young young goalkeeper. But that's the end of today's video. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed. It was a very good win today, and I think we've got a lot done. Very good signing of Santos for a very cut price deal. And I hope you enjoyed.